Hello everyone, Kumoa here, and welcome to my build guide slash gameplay of my dual wheel duelist. This is going to be a quite different setup than I usually do because it's going to be both a uh, gameplay and a build guide. And the biggest reason I don't do what I usually do it is it's too warm to actually sit down in like five six hours and record everything and everything. It's just too warm weather, but I don't want you to just wait for me to do it. So I hope this setup will work for you at least. Tell me comment if this is our right set, because I'm probably going to do the normal set as soon as the weather gets better because it's horrible. It's like brutally hot in here. Well, I'm not going to talk too much about weather, so let's go straight to the business. Let's go to... and take a look at my passive skill tree first, before I finish the, this map. Let's start by an ascendancy tree. I went for the gladiator, I went for painforged, versatile combatant, then I went for blood in the eye, and the gorgeous pilot. So I do a, quite a bit of bleed damage, the enemy, t enemy that are bleeding take extra damage, and I have some block chance. An alternative to going uh, gladiator, or actually to go for... Uh, What's the name for that character now? For a champion instead. A champion would work well and go for permanent fortify. And then either go for uh, the taunt or the two buffing that gives uh, a movement speed or an uh, attack damage to you and your ally. And uh, loss to strike and uh, loss to fall. Would be a good option, but I went for the gladiator in this case. In the skill tree, I start by two. Uh, this is how I level up the character. I want to tell everything now. I went for attack speed, then I went for physical damage, I went for armor evasion in life here, and of course, you can take this one as well. I went for master arena, bravery, art of the gladiator. I went for debris. I, I have a mighty influence, and this one actually requires some explanation. This is a fresh a fresh hole yeah? similar to other ones that you uh, that require you to have either dexterity, strength or intelligence. Depends on the yule, it says on the yule. This one in particular, the might and influence, it says 40 dexterity in a radius. And here is the important part. It just needs to be in the radius. It doesn't need to be allocated. You can see here I have one dexterity here, uh, which is 10 dexterity, 20 dexterity, 30 dexterity. Yeah, you can see it. But I only have allocated two of them. And I don't need to allocate these two for this one to work. You just need to have it in this place and this will, will work. So you don't have to allocate the dexterity. You just need to have the dexterity in the radius. Just so everyone knows that because that's a usual thing to uh, uh, confuse people. So I try to be a cl as clear as possible in this one. And this Yule in particular, you need to either trade it or find it yourself. But it's a very inexpensive Yule. I think you can get it for like one alchemy if you don't find it yourself. Moving on, I have Gornos Blood and all of the nice life here. I went for Cloak and Chain, some nice armor and evasion buffs, and some uh, resistance. I have Blade Barrier for some uh, extra block chance, some damage. And I have Amber Dexterity. I have Iron Reflexes, which convert all of my evasion into armor instead. This is not a must-have, and more or less depend on the gear, but if you have some evasion on your gear, this is, this is definitely a good choice. Then I have Vitality Moon. And this note here, this Life and Mana Lich note here, are the only sources of uh, mana I need in the entire skill tree. But in early game, when you're leveling up, it can be a very good idea to take both this Mana Lich note here and even Spirit Void. And then when you have more damage, you're just gonna take away both Spirit Void and this Mana Lich here, and just have this one. This one gives you plenty of uh, mana to use. Moving on. I went this way here, and then I went down and take Blade of Corning. I also went up here. If you need some more uh, life uh, when you're leveling up, it, it can be a good idea to go up earlier to the big life wheel here. I also have Path to Warrior, Durality, and Berserky. And a Yule Socket here, and yes, I know this one don't have any life on it, unfortunately. But it gives a ton of damage and some block chance when dual wielding. But if you can, try to get a Yule which have physical damage with dual wielding, or melee damage, or physical damage in general, or attack speed. Uh, some on that combination, and try to get some life if you can. Block chance is also quite nice as well. Moving on, I have Bloodless. 
I have unregulated stance. If you want even more protection, you can take Soul of Steel, which is a quite nice choice. Moving on, I have Lust for Carnage for some even more life leech. I have Jaggernaut. I have Razor's Edge. And I have Blade Master. Another dual socket here. Again, you can see increased damage, increased attack speed, increased physical damage from dual wielding, and I also have some block chance. But again, unfortunately, this one don't have life. So always try to get life on your yules. But uh, just remember, when you try to search for life on yules, it will be more expensive. Just keep that in mind. And I went up here to take Resolute Technique. So this is a non-crit based build. It can't crit, but it can't miss either. So you don't need any accuracy. I went for Barbarism. I have Strong Hem. I'm. I am Born to Fight, Heart of the Warrior, Warrior's Blood, some nice life and armor notes here. And that's pretty much my skill tree. If you have any questions or ideas, feel free to ask in the comments. So let's take a fast look at my items as well. I'm using these two swords here, and the only thing you want for your swords, you want as high as possible attack speed and physical damage. It doesn't need to be an exact copy of these two weapons. But just try to get as high physical damage and attack speed as you can get or can afford. When it comes to my helmet, it has a standard defensive helmet, resistance, life and good armor. Same thing, I'm using this six linked uh, armor right here. And what do you want for your armor? You want of course life, good armor or evasion and armor, good re some resistance and that's pretty much it. A good unique uh, alternative would to be, of course, to use uh, Belly of the Beast. That would actually be the best choice you can have for your armor, but a 6 link Belly of the Beast is quite expensive. You can see it on screen as well. For my rings and amulets, again, life and resistance is the most important thing, but if you can, try to get some damage there as well. For my gloves, I use a spiked gloves, which I accidentally used an enchantment on, which is quite embarrassing if I can be honest, so big fail on me, but it was a long time ago and I didn't realize that. So yeah, I, I ruined these spiked gloves here, usually they have increased physical damage on them, or increased melee physical damage actually, but it's not a must have. And for your gloves, again, defensive. Life and resistance and damage if you can afford it. And don't ruin your spiky gloves like I have done right here. For my belt, again, a rustic stash with uh, life and resistance on. And this uh, rustic stash in particular is quite nice actually. You can use an... Uh, what's the name for that belt right now? A uh, leather belt instead if you want even more life. You can easily get a leather belt with like 150 life on. But you will lose some damage. And for my boots, movement speed would be nice, but not a must have because I'm using whirling blades to like move around on the map in like two seconds. So you don't have to have movement speed, but it can be nice if you can afford it. A good alternative if you want uh, some uh, unique boots would be to use Calm's Root. Then you can't get stunned. And if you're using Calm's Root and you can't get stunned, you don't need to have Unravering Stance anymore. Other than that, life and resistance. For my flask, I'm using a series promise, very easy to get, just go and beat that series, which may not be easy to do, but this build will easily do it, but you, you get what I'm saying, it's easy to get this flask. Then I'm using a cataclysm, uh, increase the recovery rate, immune to bleeding, and immune to bleeding always have an anti-bleeding flask on you, if you not are a slayer, but even if it's a slayer, it's not that bad to actually have an anti-bleed with you. I'm using this flask here and give me some armor and some extra charges. I have a taste of hate, not a must have at all. You don't have to have this flask here because it's a very, quite expensive flask. I don't want to say very expensive flask, but quite expensive and not a must have, but a very good flask indeed. And I'm using a basalt flask here for some even more re remove bleeding and increased charge recovery. And that's pretty much my gear, and you probably want to see my yules, so let's take a look at them. For my main damage setup, which is Dual Strike, and Dual Strike are supported by Maim support, Multi Strike, Melee Physical Damage, Ruthlessness, and Chance to Bleed. And uh, 
when I just clearing trash and normal enemies, I just switch out my chance to bleed for ancestral call for some better AOE uh, damage. Talking about AOE, before I forget it, before you mention it, uh, the the that I talked about before, might and influence, are actually my source of AOE, so I don't have to use ancestral call to get my AOE. But it makes it much more smooth to do my AOE with ancestral call. So that's that. So when it comes to my auras, I'm just gonna remember where I had my auras. It was a while ago where I put my gems now. I'm sorry if I'm being slow. Uh, let's see now. I almost have shown all of my gears. Gems now. All right, here we have it. I am using vulnerability together with blasphemy to make the enemy take more physical damage, ex extra physical damage, and I'm using hatred. And sometimes, I, uh, for example, switching out my vulnerability for hell of ash. I'm using also a blood rage. I don't think I have blood rage linked to anything. Also using two uh, counter attacks because I yeah, get some extra damage in there. So using both vengeance and repost. To get with melee physical damage and some life leech for some extra leech. I'm using a cause and damage taken setup. Let's take away that. Cause and damage taken together with uh, increased duration, immortal call, and not hell of ash. So only uh, in uh, increased duration and immortal call. Then I'm using my movement skill, which is Whirring Blade, and I'm also using Leap Slam, and they are both supported by Blood Magic and Faster Attacks. So this is my main, actually, movement speed, uh, uh, movement skill, which is uh, Whirling Blade, which makes it very fast to traverse maps, as you can see. So let's... Oh, before I forgot to mention it, when it comes to the bandits, I, uh, I, this character actually helped Oak to get the physical damage, but another option is just to kill all of them and take the passive skill point. But on this character, I helped Oak to get the passive skill, uh, to get the physical damage reduction, life generation, and the physical damage. So let's compare my clear speed or my killing of mob speed. When this is why I don't using ancestral call. Sorry if I don't kill enemies in one shot, because uh, my internet connection allows many of my attacks to miss, even though they shouldn't, but my attack speed is so freaking fast that my attacks miss, because my connection can't keep up. So let's put my Ancestral Call, which actually a one thing Ancestral Call actually for some reason uh, fixes for me, it makes it more streamlined. As you can see, it's hitting a lot, lot better. So let's kill some enemies here and go for the boss. Ooh, another river map. So this will be the gameplay uh, part of <laughs> uh, this one. This video. Here we have the boss. And by the way, I'm playing a park map with a tier 13 map. And uh, against the boss, uh, there are no reason to use uh, ancestral call because that, that's just a DPS loss. So switch back and let's attack the boss. Let's stand here in everything. This is not a good way to actually fight a boss on. And yeah, the mob, mobs here have a lot of extra health. So I need to be a little bit careful here because uh, it takes some time to kill them because they have like 30% extra life. And there we go. Boss is dead. So, uh, yeah, I should probably show whether this map has uh, less armor, less block chance. The enemies have like 40% more life and they have extra damage as cold. Not be a big of a deal, but it takes some longer time to actually kill the enemies. So, I hope you guys like this a little bit rushed version of a build guide. I hope it was good enough at least, but as I said before, uh, it's just too warm weather right now to, uh, for me to actually really make a longer video. And I hope my other build guys are gonna update it will uh, be that, but I am just soaked right now. It's so hot in here. <laughs> I can promise you that. Man, I hate this weather. Let's make it so hard to actually do anything. And that's actually one of the reasons why it's taken some time for me to actually do this video. And again, I said, uh, sorry for the 
delays upon delays of making this video. I was a little bit sick last week as well, but yeah. I hope you guys like this video and tell me a comment if I forget something. Oh, actually, I know one thing I may forget, I don't really remember. But it was, it was the Pantheon. And well, in the Pantheon, you can take whatever you want because you can just change back and forth. What do I actually have? I have physical damage reduction and I have additional physical damage reduction when there are only one nearby enemies. Actually, Solo Lunaris would probably be better. You can take whatever you want and what works for you because it's not that very important in my opinion. But I hope you guys like this character. Tell me in the comments if I forget something or if you have any ideas about improvement because no matter how many times you make a video, maybe someone come up with an improvement. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys like this setup and see you guys next time.